everybody, this is Rex Luna here from AllThat'sEpic.com's cosplay section and today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to make armor out of Wonderflex. Now for our armor model, so to speak, we're going to be using Hawk's Champion Mage Armor from Dragon Age 2. I hope you guys can see that, okay? Now, the only reason I'm picking this specific armor is because I actually started that costume a few years back and I already had the pattern pieces lying around, so I just saved a little bit of work. Now, a few facts about Wonderflex before we get started. It's a thermoplastic material, which means when it gets heated up, you can mold it into different shapes to degree. I mean, it's not unlimited. And when it gets heated up, it'll actually stick to itself or another thermoplastic material, which will eliminate the need for glues or tapes or any other kind of adhesive, which is awesome. And you'll see a little bit more what I mean when we actually get to that part of the video. So, as far as materials go, obviously, we need our Wonder Flicks. Now, <laughs> I got, I think, the biggest roll. Now, I don't know what the dimensions are of each of the rolls that they offer, but they usually come in what they call extra large, large, medium, and small. Um, they carry them on a variety of sites now. It's become a lot more common. I'll put a few links in the description for the, some of the places that I've seen it sold. It's a little expensive, but it's not as expensive as it's been in the past few years, just because the demand has gotten a little higher, so they produce a little bit more. Um, all right, so after that, we're gonna, whew, we're gonna want your craft foam. And I was lucky enough to find this in a big roll as well. And I found it in big roll probably because I have a big craft store. It's a Joanne Superstore. I think this was about seven bucks, which is super awesome because trying to cut a bunch of armor pieces out of those little sheets, while it's nice because you don't have to constantly unroll this and try and make it stay unrolled, um, you end up with a lot of scrap pieces that are too small to use. And while you can use some of the scrap pieces, you can't use all of them and it just ends up being a waste. Um, oh, before I forget, as far as scrap pieces go, like I said, hang on to some of th these, uh, craft foam pieces, just because sometimes you might end up with a sharp edge or something might just chafe you a little bit, so putting a little piece of craft foam underneath will just make it a little more comfortable, but for the Wonderflex, save almost all of your scrap pieces, because even just a tiny little piece about that big, you can use that to uh, for fixings. What I mean by fixings is if you stick a little square of it underneath to make almost like a Wonderflex loop, you can kind of thread um, like a strap through it and you can put a clip or a buckle or something on there and then that way you can fix the armor to like a shirt you're wearing or whatever. I would show you an example but I don't have any completed armor to show you. Um, at least not with fixings or paint or all that stuff. So um, I can actually link you to a video of a girl talking about how you do fixings in armor and she explained it super well even though she's speaking in German and she's putting subtitles. It's great. Anyway. Other supplies you're going to need is obviously you're going to need some patterns for your armor and what I use for my patterns is actually poster board and by poster board I mean like the super cheap stuff you can find in craft stores and even like Safeway like the 99 cent stuff maybe even 59 cent stuff um, just super thin cardboard and I use this cardboard because it's thick enough that when I tape it all together when I'm done I can actually get the completed armor shape out of cardboard. So then I can see how it's going to look when it's done and if I got the shape correct and if I got the size correct. So if there's any issues in the size or the shape I can make the needed adjustments then other than making the armor out of Wonderflex and realizing oh crap it's actually half an inch too small around all the edges. You know. Um, a lot of people do it with just newspaper or whatever. But I prefer to do it with poster board, it's just my opinion. Uh, other than that, you need your heat gun, which I got mine at my craft store in the embossing section, which is where stamps are. It's a little bit low powered, but it does the job. It gets hot enough, it just takes a little bit longer. It's smaller, so it's kind of nice because it's compact. Um, which is also nice because you can take it with you to conventions, so if there's any emergencies, you can take little pieces of Wonderflex with you and heat it up and stick pieces together to do any emergency fixes. But you can get more high-powered ones, 
that almost look like giant nail guns. And those get hotter a lot faster and they get more hot. So I would aim to get one of those if you can. Um, might be nice to have the smaller ones if you're starting out just to see if this is something you like doing and then that way you don't spend more on the giant gun and not have anywhere to put it. So just an idea. Uh, other than that, you really only need a pen to mark out all of your pattern pieces for cutting. I use a Sharpie just because the felt tip works better on the craft foam. And because the underside of the Wonderflex is so textured, it's really hard to do it with a pen or pencil. Ah, sorry, it's falling over. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. We're good to go. So I'm going to walk you through some of the stages of preparing all of these armor pieces. And then we're going to see what it looks like when we're done. So let's get started. Uh, these are the pattern pieces for the particular piece that I'm going to be showing you how, how to do today. This is the bracer. Um, now, this bracer is actually going to be... I don't know how well you can see it. It's going to be kind of bent like that on all these little corners. So the reason the pattern piece is bent is, like I said, I actually taped the whole piece together to see how it would look. So it's going to be something kind of like that. Looks super awesome. It's also going to have these little edge pieces, which will be a lot easier to do once um, it's all put together with the Wonderflex. Now, the first thing you're going to do after you have your pattern piece is cut it out of the craft foam. Now, I actually already did that, and unfortunately I don't have any footage because I was having camera problems. So, I'll just explain it to you. It's very simple. You actually just cut out the exact size and shape of your pattern piece to the best of your ability. Since I'm tracing it with the Sharpie, sometimes I have a little trouble trying to get the exact shape, um, but that's not too much of an issue. So I cut out one of each piece out of craft foam. And I marked which piece was the top simply because with some of the other pieces I was cutting, I wanted to make sure I had two of one side and two of the other side because I had triangles that all looked the same, but one might be a slightly different direction. Anyway, it was just for my own sanity to make sure I had enough of the right pieces. So, looks all cool and stuff. Now, then you have to cut two pieces of each pattern piece out of the Wonderflex. And you cut it out a little differently in the Wonderflex. And I have two of the small one here. And as you can see, we actually cut a little bit around. Now I still traced the shape out, just so I knew how much around I wanted to go to get a little extra without having too much waste. Um, also, since I have these little foley areas, I was able to see through to the other side and make little markings so I knew where I needed to try to make the folds once I have it all heated up and together. Um, Another side note is, um, craft foam actually can mold as well, so you don't have to worry about the craft foam holding up your molding process if you're trying to make a cool shape. Um, it will mold almost as easily as the Wonderflex will, so don't worry about that. So, uh, one of the problems you're going to come across with this stuff is it's very stiff, so once it's rolled up, it's going to have a little trouble kind of keeping it down, so having weights might be helpful, but I don't really have anything. So, you just need normal scissors to cut this stuff out. It can be a little tough if you're weak like I am, but it shouldn't be too bad. So, just cut to leave a little bit of room around the edges. You don't need too much space. 